your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Kind of a chilly night across central Illinois. Temperatures falling with these clear skies that we've got. Now, earlier today, we had rain around. We had some hail falling across the area, and the winds were strong. Now those winds have finally calmed down, only between 5 and 10 miles an hour. But with those calm winds and the clear skies, our temperature is plummeting 45 in Champaign, 46 in Effingham, 49 in Springfield. And as you get going tomorrow morning, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of you were in the upper 30s to begin the day, and we don't even get out of the 50s. I'd take the jacket tomorrow, especially if you're out early in the morning. But soon, the temperatures are headed to the 70s. I'll show you when to expect that when we come back here in just a little bit. WCA3 News starts right now. Now, from WCIA3 News. Police uh, reform doesn't work. And so um, what we're calling for is the abolition of the UIPD. That's the demand from some U of I students. What the group says money should be used for instead. Plus, the state's no longer including Champaign County's COVID-19 test numbers in Region 6. Why the region could face restrictions anyway. And Illini fans aren't allowed at football games this year, but that doesn't mean you can't see your face in the stands. We'll tell you why. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. That group of U of I students raised its voice on the streets of campus. Its demand is to cut ties with university police and fund social services instead. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Dozens of people marched through campus, starting with a protest against police brutality outside UIPD. They're calling for the university to defund the department and get rid of the officers altogether. WCI 3's Jennifer Jensen joins us now. So Jennifer, students have been working to make this happen for quite some time. Paul, they have earlier this summer U of I students campaigned to dissolve the university's police force. Those students sent an open letter to university leaders that was signed by hundreds of people requesting to cancel contracts with all police departments. I spoke with students who led today's protest on what they want to be done to protect people instead. Outside the U of I police department. Students made their demands known. What we want is police out of our classrooms, out of our dorms, off our campus, yeah, yeah, and out yeah, of our yeah. society. We don't want more community-oriented police. We don't want friendlier police. What we just need is more money for our social workers. This group is calling for removing police off campus completely. They believe that police are a detriment to a healthy and safe society. They're actually responding after things have already occurred. Um, and if they do come while it's occurring, they either escalate the situation further, cause further harm, um, or they don't resolve anything whatsoever. Instead, they want the department's funding to pay for more social workers, crisis intervention professionals, and other methods of de-escalation. But what's the alternative to police intervention if violent crimes are committed on campus, like shootings or armed robberies? This was their response. It's not the fact that people are um, engaging in acts of violence because it's because they want to like it's often that they're missing resources and are acting out in response to like a certain need area that isn't being met by the state for them whether they're not um given healthy food whether they're not given healthy housing whether they're not being taken care of um through medical or like mental health services <laughs> UIPD did not have a direct response to the group's demand to get rid of their department, but these students had much more to say about their cause. We don't have enough money for our social services, for our mental health services, and for our social workers, and we don't need those institutions to be tied to policing. What we need is like direct investment into those community care resources. The only comment the U of I Police Department had regarding this protest was that they are taking this time to listen to the community and let their voices be amplified for now. Paul, back to you. All right, Jennifer, thanks. In other news, a 16-year-old girl is now charged with first-degree murder by accountability and the death of another teenager from Olney. She and 18-year-old Rick Meter were arrested. He was caught in Florida yesterday. They're both charged in connection with the murder of Kyle Johnson in September. We have an update now on a man facing federal charges in Illinois and Minnesota. Michael Harry is expected in federal court next month for his role 
in the bombing of a mosque in Minnesota. He's also charged for trying to set fire to a Champaign women's health clinic. The man from Clarence was the ringleader of a small militia group called the White Rabbits. His next federal court date in Illinois is set for March 2021. Call it a Facebook fundraiser gone wrong. That's what a woman is saying about a funeral fundraiser. Champaign police told us today they got a complaint about a fundraiser over the summer. A homeless man died following an assault and robbery. Sherry Williamson started a fundraiser for his burial. Williamson said she donated excess money to charities, but the family of Todd Ledbetter said that information didn't check out. That's when a family member went to police. They're preparing a report on the matter. It's not clear whether that will lead to a full investigation. A car drove into a home last night on the east side of Springfield. The house caught fire. The driver and passengers left the scene before police arrived, but they were caught and arrested. The sound from the crash, that drew a crowd. One neighbor says it took a while before the fire started. After that, the fire, the fire just got more out of control and everything like that just got carried away. And the police arrived. They arrived just on time. It was, I believe it was Springfield PD. They arrived just on time. Two of the two of the officers, they ran over there, jumped in the ass and kicked the door down and got the gentleman out. That man in the home was taken to the hospital. Springfield fire officials say he is expected to survive. The Champaign-Urbana Public Health District says the county shouldn't have to be part of Region 6's mitigation if the area reaches an 8% positivity rate. The state removed Champaign County's testing results from the region because they were skewing the numbers. Region 6 spans from Watsika in the north to Olney in the south. Without Champaign County included, the positivity rate is more than 7%. With it, it's around 3%. That's because of the volume of testing done on the campus at the U of I. But a positivity rate of 8% for three days in a row would mean more restrictions for the region. State leaders are now considering including Champaign County, even though its numbers didn't contribute to the percentage. Now, while the state says we want to remove you guys from the numbers, which increases the positivity rate, but then for mitigation efforts, we want to put you back minus your numbers. It doesn't make sense to us. Tighter restrictions would mean no indoor dining and reduced gathering sizes from 50 to 25 people. It would also bring down capacity for indoor activities from 50 to 25 percent. Looking at statewide numbers, the state is reporting 25 more deaths. Almost 8,700 people have lost their lives to COVID-19. There are more than 2,100 new cases in the state. That makes well over 295,000 infections diagnosed altogether. The seven-day positivity rate did drop to 3.5 percent. Colder weather means staying inside more frequently, and the U of I made sure its HVAC systems on campus can handle that with the pandemic. All systems were inspected over the summer. That's around 2,000 air systems across campus. Everything was checked to make sure enough fresh air was being brought in and ventilated. A few changes were also made to how they operate. Campus has many energy conservation measures in place. Typically, uh, many of those have been overridden. So we're, you know, extending the amount of time that these systems are running. We're running systems seven days per week, um, at least two hours before and two hours after when the building's occupied. All university-owned buildings were part of the inspection. A school district is making sure parents and caregivers have the tools they need to help students with math. Champaign Schools has a new math curriculum called Envision, and tonight they had a workshop so those caregivers could learn more about it. It included a live math lesson from a student's point of view. School leaders say... It's very different to how many adults learned math. I can vouch for that for sure. So learning about it is a good way to help students at home. We know that our kids are in different spaces doing school differently than they've ever done it before. And so this is an opportunity to really equip and um, empower our um, caretakers at home and in the community to best support our students. They had to cap in-person training to 15 people, but almost 50 people joined the workshop by Zoom. A House Democrat announced her plans to challenge Speaker Michael Madigan for his job today. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell has the latest developments from Springfield. The problems keep piling up for House Speaker Michael Madigan. He's the longest tenured House Speaker, not just currently, but in American history of any state legislature. Of course, it's well documented and well known, his troubles with the FBI and the federal prosecutors who have been looking into this eight-year-long corruption scheme with ComEd. For that same reason, he's also facing potential discipline, possible expulsion from the Illinois House of Representatives under this House Special Investigative Committee. All of that has opened up a new window for a four-term House Democrat and a woman, Representative Stephanie Kifowitz, to mount her own challenge to try and 
take Speaker Madigan's gavel from him. That election is scheduled for next January. She's already now making her campaign public. The choice is clear. The choice is whether we continue to do the status quo or we finally move into the future and beyond the scandals and corruption of Michael Madigan and bring this state to where it needs to be. Kifowit knows the road ahead won't be easy, especially considering she may not be the only Democrat to throw their hat in the ring and try and challenge Madigan for his gavel next January. She is the first to do so, though, and she may have some support, considering six of the seven House Democrats to already come out and say Madigan should step down. They're women. Kifowit, a Marine, she points to her resume and her leadership style to say she can do the job, she's up for the task. Madigan won't go down without a fight. The only time he's relinquished control of that gavel since 1983 was for one term in 1995, just after Newt Gingrich led that Republican revolution with a contract for America, and for a short spell, Republicans had control of the House in Illinois. Not since then has Madigan relinquished his gavel. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell. Now, Speaker Madigan responded in a statement saying, quote, we are at a critical juncture in our country and all of us should be focused on coming together to defeat Donald Trump and repair the hate and division he has sown in our communities. You won't be able to go to a haunted house in Illinois this year, but that's not the case across the state's border. Plus, it's Halloween with a dash of Easter. How one park district is encouraging people to get out and search. And Memorial Stadium stands won't be filled with fans this year, but that doesn't mean the seats will all be empty. We'll explain coming up.